All right, what is up, everybody? We're here with the Creality Ender 3 V2 Neo, and we're gonna unbox this thing finally. And we're gonna get it set up right here next to the Creality CR10 Smart. And I've been really patiently waiting to open this. If you guys follow my channel, you know we have the Star Killer helmet right here. And I just want to let you guys know that this is still a project that's in the background. Can't wait to finish this. This is the Star Killer helmet from Andor. So I made some placements. Uh, on the top here to put the the big blades that go up on the back of the, the helmet as you can see right here so this would probably go somewhere about there and i could just man that's gonna look so cool when it's done painted finished so stick around for that but i just wanted to give you guys a heads up about what's been happening i know it's been a while since i've uploaded but let's get this thing unboxed let's use this to print out some really cool props and other cool stuff and i don't know if you noticed the table that we're on is where the Creality cr 10 s 5 used to be, but I sold it. Yep, I had to sell it. I did not want it anymore. <laughs> and I have something much cooler to replace it. And that's for an upcoming video. If you've seen some of my older videos, I'm sure you guys know what's coming. So let's get this thing unboxed. All right guys, so let's bring a knife out here. Nice clean cut. All right, so this is what it would be like if you had purchased one and I'm just gonna open it so you guys can see what's inside. All right, your run of the mill cover. All right, you know, I've been really waiting a long time to open this. I've had this printer for almost a couple of months, maybe not that long, but anyhow, we got the quick start guide. Comes with this little sticker here. Let's see what else is in here. Yeah, we got the quick start guide, which is kind of its manual, how to get it set up and all that. We got this um, support. QR code and an after sale service card. And it seems like they gave us some, some stickers of sorts. Interesting. I may stick that on the machine later. I'm not sure, but we'll see. All right, next up, you got your bag of goodies. Oh, and this is a really cool thing that I've seen. It goes on the extruder and it turns so that you know that the extruder is functioning. That's actually pretty cool. Let's see what else is in here. You got your little needle to unclog your nozzle. You have another one of these, which I love. These little snippers they give you. These are really great too. I love these, the third one, adding it to the, to the arsenal. Yep, you got your wrenches, your screwdrivers, your Allen wrenches and whatnot. And you got your, <laughs> your standard uh, white filament, which is always terrible. But let's <laughs> it's good for if you need to do some test prints. You got your zip ties, your screws, your lockdown screws here. Some extra parts, extra nozzle, extra clip for your uh, Bowden tube on the extruder. And then you got your SD card with all the files in it. All right, guys, so let's start taking out some of this stuff here. Oh, that's a sweet little screen there. I like that screen. It's really nice. Has a little protective film on it. It's got a little bit of rattle to it, but... Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna put that there for now. Actually, let's put that in a safer spot. <laughs> okay, now we got the power cord, standard. All right, that's tiny, I love it. I love how tiny it is. I've been needing a tiny printer. Ever since I gave away my Monoprice Mini Delta V2, I've been wanting something smaller, so this is great. My hope is that this thing will fit in the place that I have for it, Ryman. Nice. Okay, buddy. What is this? Is this wobbly? Nope, no, nope, that's good. Okay, all right. It's definitely small, and I like it that it's small. Something over here, I don't know what that is. I'll throw this box down now. <laughs> all right, this is kind of cool. I love how small it is, that's so cool. All right, I don't know what this is, so if you guys know, maybe you can tell me. But well, this was just in the box there. I really don't know what the heck that was for, but I'll flip it around and see what it used for. Finally got the ender out of the box. Oh, that is, oh, do I dare say it? Do I dare say it? Oh, that is cute. All right, that's a cute printer. Oh man, I can't believe I said that. All right, that's okay. I said it, it's done. But look at that. One of these Z bars, first for me. I was expecting two, but it's okay. All right, now. How to get this thing installed is the question. Ah, I think I figured out what this is for. This is the toolbox? For the toolbox? I think that was for the toolbox. All right, let me show you guys. Right here, there's like a toolbox. So you just kind of stick it in there. I'm trying to squeeze it in. All right, 
doesn't fit as perfectly as one might hope. Let's see. Mm, yeah. All right, there you go. That's for the toolbox. Oh, and I did it upside down. That's all right. <laughs> Let's get that back in there. I'm assuming that I have this thing backwards because this looks like the front. So let me turn that around. You know what, guys? This is really cool. I like how small this thing is. I'm gonna turn this around. Oh man, this is so cool. Alrighty, I'm gonna turn this around like that, how it's supposed to be. And I think I just have to figure out how to put those screws, and I think I know how. So I'm just quickly grab those screws out of there, and the wrenches. All right, let's grab those screws. They're long screws for a sturdy hold. Got some washer on there. Got some washers on there as well, so that's cool. And I think it's just gonna go on the bottom there, so. Gonna bring this over to the edge. We're living on the edge, guys. Sorry for the jokes, but we're living on the edge. All right, so I'm just sticking the screw down there, getting it pre-turned in. Now let's just see which Allen wrench to use. I know it's not the biggest one, but it is the biggest one. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, got it tightened up with the Allen wrench there. Now for the other side, just putting it on the edge. So I can get that first screw in there. All right, we're humming along. This is real easy setup, guys. This is awesome. There's one extra screw. I wonder if they just sent it in as a spare or does it actually need to go somewhere? I keep rhyming today, which I don't mind. Keeps life interesting. All right, so now with the Allen wrench, I'm actually gonna tighten it all the way. All right, I tightened that up. All that's left is to put in the, um, the screen which I assume goes like this. You guys, this is just so cool. It's so like small. I love it. Well, there's one thing I need to do first because I didn't do it on this Creality CR10S5 and it may or may not have caused a lot of problems. So guys, please, please always check the power supply. I live in California, so my power supply doesn't need to be on 230, the voltage, which is back here. Mine needs to be on 115. I don't know if it's blurry, but it should be right there. So I need to switch that over to 115 because it's at 230 right now. And to do that, just get yourself a tiny little flathead screwdriver, as you can see there, and just switch it on over. Bam, 115. Now, the power supply won't burn up. In fact, it'll be running smoothly. Like I said, I don't know why they gave us an extra screw. I appreciate it, Creality. You're always giving us some extra stuff. This is nice and tight. I'm just checking in, making sure all these things are tightened pretty well. Everything is looking pretty good. Time to get the screen latched on. Ah, and it's using one Allen wrench smaller. Aha, nope, two Allen wrench sizes smaller. Yep. All right, so we got three screws here. Start loosening these up. All right, so after I loosen those up, these should just fit in like a charm. Now we're just kind of rotating the screws so they fit in perfectly. And then we just begin tightening them. Even after the first one, you can kind of just let that thing go as long as you made sure it's screwed in tight. I don't know if you're supposed to leave this flush right here, but I'm just, I pushed it all the way forward. That's nice and snug on there. All that's left is to put this wire in the back. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, that was real smooth. Now this process is usually pretty simple. You got these wires, they've got letters on them. For example, this one says X. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on the camera. This one says E and this one says X. Looks like there's one here and this one is Z. So you just find the subsequent uh, input for them. So this Z would go here, especially because it says Z right there. Let's see if you can pick that up. So it says Z over there and you got the Z wire right here. So you just plug it in there. And likewise, you do the same with all the other pieces, with all the other wires actually. So I'm gonna go in and see what this part is here, this top part. So I'm gonna see what, what uh, letter this is. Seriously, it doesn't tell you what letter that is, which is funny if you ask me. All right, so the E goes on to the extruder and the X goes on to the bottom here. All right, and the X here goes just on the bottom here. All right, cool, so all the wires are plugged in and this thing should be ready to go. All I gotta do is put in the power cable here, which is on the back of the machine. Let's actually do it around the cable. I'm gonna switch this to off, honestly. That's ready to go. I'm gonna just plug this in into the wall and this thing should be ready to go. All right, and like I said before, I'm gonna move this thing right here and you know there's one thing that i realized i haven't seen yet and that's a spool holder there should be a spool holder somewhere and lo and behold it's right here actually i'm just gonna install that on the top where it belongs and it's the same deal you just want to loosen it it's gonna go up here but it's got a little dip and i want the dip to be in the back because i think that would look nicer so i'm just gonna switch this around these spools are notoriously known 
for being kind of weak. So spool holders. So we just want to be very careful with it. All right, perfect. All right, so let's just make sure the spool would fit. Oh yeah, fits like a charm. Cool. All right, so now that we got this, I'm just gonna pop it on. And you know what? I'm really happy that this spool holder is up here because it gives me just enough room to have both of these machines on the same table or else I don't think it would have fit. I did notice that there's very little grease on the Z screw here. So I'm actually gonna put some grease on there. I actually don't see any grease at all. So I'm gonna put on a quick glove, put some grease on there. And while I'm at it, I may also do the smart too. I haven't greased that thing since I gotten it. So probably a good time to do that. By the way, if you're interested, this is the grease I use, super lube. And you only want to put a really small amount, maybe that, if anything. All right, just to make sure it's evenly coated, I'm gonna slide this down so it's smooth and evenly coated. All right, that's nice and greasy. I'm just doing the smart really quick. All right, now that that's greased up and ready to go, let's turn this thing and get it started. All right, let's get this thing started. I have the power switch in the back I'm gonna turn on. Now that that's on, Oh yeah, that's sweet. That's looking really cool. I like that so far. Now I'm gonna have to level this thing because it's an automatic leveling and it's got the bed leveling knobs over here. So I grab my trusty sheet of paper. I'm actually gonna go to prepare here and I'm gonna preheat the PLA so I can get the bed hot too so that whatever warping happens during heating, it'll be kind of, let's say, recorded. Now I'm gonna auto home it. That is super quiet, just like the Creality CR10 Smart. I love it. They look like the same machine, it's just one bigger and one smaller. I, lo I love this. They look like they're in the same product line, let's just put it that way. There is one thing I did forget to put, which is that extruder signal, if you will. There you go. Now that that's auto-homed, I'm gonna disable the steppers. Okay, now I'm gonna get the manual bed leveling started here. So, we're gonna start out in the front corner here. Okay, you know what? There's one thing I did forget to do. So let me auto home it again. All right, now I'm gonna go to move. I'm just gonna bring it down to where it's touching the paper, all the way at zero. And now I'm gonna adjust the Z offset here. All right, I brought that all the way down to the middle. Now I brought that all the way down so the nozzle's touching the, the bed. Now I'm gonna disable the steppers and start doing the manual bed leveling. This side is definitely scraping. Tightening up the knob here. There you go, now there's some room. Making sure this is kind of scraping there. Good, now to the back. I'm just tightening up the back there so I can get some movement. Oh nice, that actually burned right through the bed. All right, that's good. Bringing it over to this side. Okay, that's good as well. Bring it back to the front. All right, that's slightly touching. Now I'm gonna auto home again. So basically I'm gonna to wanna to do that process three times so that I know that the bed is completely leveled and it's perfect. But just be careful guys, cause this bed here, it's made of some sort of plastic that can actually melt if the nozzle touches it. And it did melt just a little there, if you can see it right here. As I brought the nozzle back, it melted there and it melted there. So just be careful with this. This, this is actually like a meltable, I don't know what it is, but it definitely melts. All right, now that it's auto-homed again, I'm gonna move the Z all the way down to zero. Now that it's at zero, I'm gonna go to that Z offset, make sure I can get that piece of paper under there, and I can. All right, get a little scraping going. Perfect. Now I'm gonna disable the steppers. Now do the same thing again. I'm gonna bring this to the front. All right, I gotta make sure it's scraping a little bit. Got a little bit of scraping going on there. Now take it to the back. All right, got a little bit of scraping going on there. Now take it to the front. All right, got a little scraping going on there. And lastly, back here, this is too tight. All right, and we got a little bit of scraping going on there. I stored the configuration, and now I'm gonna automatic bed level it. And while that's doing its automatic bed leveling, <laughs> for the first time I'm gonna use this white filament that's without a spool, and we're just gonna do one of the test prints in there. All right guys, this is really exciting. I've been wanting to use this little guy for a long time. Let's just get this filament on there. And always, always, always you want to make sure the tip of the filament is sharp before going into the extruder. It just helps it get to where it needs to be. You cut it, 
and it's got this nice sharp tip. Now that the filament's loaded up there, I'm gonna throw in that micro SD card and see what they got in there. It's a micro SD like this. That just goes on the bottom there. All right, let's get a print going. There's a rabbit and a boat. Let's see which one is faster. And here's the cool thing. You could actually view what you're about to print, which the only time I ever seen that before was the Monoprice Mini Delta V2. So we got here a boat and a rabbit. Oh yeah, a Benchy. You know, I've out of all my time 3D printing, I've never 3D printed a Benchy before. So for that reason alone, I'm going to 3D print this. All right. When it's done, I'll let you guys know how it went. All right guys, so it finished up. That didn't take much time at all. That took about an hour and 47 minutes and it's looking really nice. I'm gonna take it off the build plate here. All right, let's see. All I gotta do is bend this plate and it should come off real easily. Oh, still a little hot, but there you go. And yeah, that's honestly looking really nice. This is my first ever Benchy. And there's a like ever so slight string, but it's not even worth mentioning. It's just, it's just really a clean, a clean 3D print. And I'm super, super happy. Hopefully you can catch some of the details there, but it's looking really nice. I love it. This 3D printer is just so cool. I love it. I love it a lot. Uh, yeah, and the magnetic build plate just goes right on and it's super hot. Let me see if I can get this on straight. There you have it. And this should just come off real easily. And I do admit though, that this thing really sticks onto the build plate. I don't want to use my fingers too much. There you have it. I'm really impressed with this printer. I love it. It's quiet. It's not like the S5 where it's making all these techno sounds and all that. So I'm just happy I got rid of that thing. And this really feels like it belongs in the same product line as the CR10 Smart. The only thing that I wish this thing had was a filament runout detector. It doesn't have a filament runout detector. That's okay. All right, guys. Well, this was the unboxing of the Ender 3 V2 Neo. And it's a really great little machine. I really liked it. And if you like this video, please go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notification bell to get notified when I release new videos and click that like button as well. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and stay tuned. We got some exciting things coming up. I got my Creality CR6 Max going to be unboxed in the next video. Stay tuned. And we also have the Starkiller helmet going to be finished up pretty soon. So some exciting stuff coming up until next time, guys, peace, love, and joy.